Um, you know, first, uh, a couple things. One, he is uh, want to recognize our fans, our students. I thought uh, it was a it was a terrific turnout tonight, and uh, the students have, have uh, really made a difference, uh, especially at that uh, uh, in their section that side of the, that side of the field. It was loud there tonight, and I uh, really appreciate the uh, eight o'clock kickoff. Game's not going to end until 12 o'clock at night. On a Friday evening, uh, our alumni, our fan base, our students getting off work and, and coming out and, and supporting us—I thought it was—I thought it was tremendous. Um, second, I'd like to, you know, just mention Matt Rule in, in the Temple football program. Uh, he's a first-class person, uh, doing a great job with that program, and it's a first-class uh, operation from uh, uh, everything they do. So that's, uh, you know, they. Uh, Travel extremely well and uh, is a program, and, and I just want to mention and recognize uh, him in, in, in his program. He said some very kind words in his press conference last week about uh, Derek Matthews and uh, what he meant uh, to our conference, to college football, and I uh, thought that uh, spoke volumes of the type of the type of person that Coach Rule is and, and the type of program he's running that Temple. Uh, proud of our young men, our, our coaches, and our staff. Uh, for the win this evening, the preparation on a little bit of a shorter week. Uh, you know, you can take it for granted outside our program when, um, and I've said this before, we would play midweek every week if we could for the exposure it gives the University of Houston and our football program. Um, however, you got to make adjustments and, and uh, with that comes adjusting your practice opportunities and schedule. We were a, a practice short this week, losing the, losing the day, playing on a Friday after playing on a Saturday night on the road. And, and uh, I thought our young men, our staff, and our, and our coaches really did a nice job in, in preparation. Uh, two of the three things we talked about going into this game, I thought we did a great job of one. Uh, first and foremost uh, was winning the turnover battle. And uh, we created four turnovers defensively, one for, for a touchdown. And, um, uh, and uh, on offense and on special teams, we did not turn the ball over. So any time you're plus four in the turnover margin, you've got a great, great chance to win the game, and that was our number one goal going into tonight's game. Uh, the second was field position. Uh, I thought uh, uh, I'll have to look at the numbers and see what it looked like on paper, but standing on the sidelines, I thought we gave our offense uh, outstanding field position for the most part tonight. And uh, defensively, I thought with our uh, special teams, um, we gave our defense opportunities to take the field and, and uh, force Temple's offense to have to go 75 or 80 yards. So uh, the third key for tonight for us, uh, I was disappointed in, and that was uh, reducing penalties. And uh, um, against Central Florida, uh, we had 10 penalties, um, excuse me, 12 penalties called on us. We cut that number to three versus Memphis. And again, I, I said this during this past week, uh, of the three against Memphis, not one was a pre-snap penalty, uh, nor was one a post-play penalty, which was critical in that game, uh, not backing us up offensively. And uh, tonight I felt like we took a step back uh, in that area. Um, uh, we had way too many holding calls, some on special teams and uh, some on offense. And that's something we're going to have to readdress uh, moving forward. So, uh, you know, I thought our young men uh, played hard tonight. I thought we had some guys step in uh, when their teammates uh, we're not able to, to play tonight due to uh, injury and, uh, and uh, perform well. So it was a great team win, offense, defense, and special teams. I thought we had some outstanding individual performances. Uh, certainly the guys that created the turnovers defensively goes without saying. Uh, Howard Wilson, William Jackson, Stephen Taylor, and Trayvon Stewart. I thought uh, we had a big goal on stand there at the end defensively. And um, uh, Stephen Taylor's uh, forced fumble and fumble recovery uh, when Temple was at our own our one yard line was uh, certainly a critical play in the game. Uh, offensively, I thought this was one of Ryan Jackson's better games since he's been at our program. Uh, I thought Kenneth Farrell ran extremely hard, and uh, I thought uh, our blocking on the perimeter by our wideouts was 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 excellent. And I thought this was one of Markeith Amble's uh, better games since he's been here. And uh, it was good to see Deontay Greenberry get in the end zone and, and have 10 catches. Um, you know, and it, just the last individual I'll mention will be our quarterback, Greg Ward. Uh, you know, I thought um, Greg was 29 of 33, 88% uh, completion percentage, 268 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, um, I thought he was very accurate tonight. I thought he made great decisions. 
and uh, proud of the way uh, proud of the way he uh, prepared and played tonight. Tony, you've seen this defense create a lot of turnovers, but that goal line where, where Steve Taylor gets the and the, the momentum, how it shifted, how, how big of a, a, a play in your mind is that from what you've seen in the this year in terms of what it does, maybe the catalyst you guys into stretching the lead out or at least well, I thought I thought it was a huge play, and um, you know, PJ Walker, their quarterback, it it appeared like he was uh, trying to extend the ball over the goal line, and and uh, uh, Stephen Taylor does a great job knocking it out, uh, and uh, and getting on it for the for the touchback, giving our offense the ball at the twenty yard line. So I, I think as much as anything, uh, and you might have said this, Joseph, in your question, it's it's the word momentum. You know, the, the momentum. Uh, they had the momentum at that point on that drive, getting down inside our five-yard line. And I think by our defense, and, and specifically Steven Taylor making that play right there, I think we were able to, to flip the momentum back uh, uh, to us uh, in, in, just, in just that one, one play by Steven. Coach, in uh, relation to the offense, how, how key is the defense's the strength that they've been showing in the past couple of games. How key is that to the team's recent successes? And then um, also without, it's, it's getting the offense back out on the field at a very quick pace. And, and how is that affecting the team? Well, I think, um, I think a couple things. And, and I'm going to start here. I think one, the way our defense is playing, it's allowing me to uh, be a little bit uh, more aggressive, if you will, offensively with going for it on fourth down in maybe an area where we might uh, might have punted uh, in years past to maybe pin them back and make them go 90 yards rather than taking a, a chance on a fourth down uh, at the 35 yard line with the with the risk of not converting and giving the opponent better better field position uh, you know I don't think uh, I don't think we're doing a very good job right now offensively um, taking the field after we're creating turnovers defensively uh, I think uh, you know, going back to what Joseph just asked, when when we get that type of momentum and we create a turnover, uh, you'd like to run out there. Typically in, in football, uh, within programs, it's called sudden change. When you have a sudden change, you'd like to run out there and seize the momentum, go down the field and, and, uh, and, get, and get a touchdown, at least get points on the board. And I think um, over the course of the season, uh, I think we did that at times tonight, but we got to get more consistent. Uh, offensively taking advantage of the times uh, we, we get the, the turnovers on defense. But uh, again, momentum's been huge. Uh, you know, one thing I, I think we're, we've not been known for here is time of possession. And uh, uh, I think we were uh, 42 and a half minutes. Uh, we had the ball tonight for 42 and a half minutes. They had the ball tonight for 17 and a half minutes. And uh, I, I don't know last time, uh, my seven years here in our program overall, I don't know last time I've seen us have the ball for 42 and a half minutes. But um, part of that, a lot of that had to do with our defense taking the football away and then our offense. I thought did a nice job of moving the chains, which is something we've talked about as much uh, of late as, as any time. Just trying to get first down, move the chains, uh, not back ourselves up. And uh, you know, I think our, our defense right now, somebody showed me a stat here, the last 20 games, we forced 66 turnovers. Uh, that's 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 not bad. So, uh, you know, again, I think that uh, uh, that really has been uh, certainly helpful. And it goes back to what I said. I don't know if I've answered even your question, but it goes back to what I said. Uh, first thing is turnover margin, and offensively, zero turnovers it was huge. Was as big as uh, our defense getting four. Tony, you've had two games now with Greg at your quarterback. Uh, can you kind of assess maybe what you've seen from game one to two and you know his comfort level and maybe how that's allowing you to either almost to tailor the offense or allowing him to you know have a little bit more I don't know, input in the offense or in terms of how he's running? Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and again I mentioned this this past week. The, the more uh, I'm actually going to back up a, a half step again. You know, again, just reminding everybody, last spring Greg was a full-time receiver. This summer Greg was a full-time receiver. Uh, we got to August, he joined the quarterback meetings, but he was still playing wide out and playing his, a limited role at quarterback. Um, so I mentioned this last week, the more he plays, the more comfortable he's going to get, and the more comfortable his 10 teammates around him 
are going are going to be with with him and in, in the execution of the offense. So, um, you know, when you asked me, I, I, I held in my smile, Joseph. When you asked me, you know, is he getting more comfortable? Because I mean, 29 to 33. That, I don't know in my 20 years if I've, I've seen that very often either. You know, almost 90 percent completion, and um, you know, I think our wideouts are doing a, a nice job catching his his passes, and um, you know, again, that 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 the dynamic he brings. And we saw it again tonight on occasion where he tucks the ball uh, on, a, on a pass play, tucks the ball, gets yards, makes people miss. Uh, you want to talk about momentum, um, you know, it energizes the sideline when he's running. It may, it may be a gain of five, but when he runs and he makes a guy uh, miss completely and gets upfield, uh, that gives energy to our sideline, our student athletes as well. Now, he said before he commenced the game that his in his mind, it's not run first. It's to see how the play develops and then go from there. Um, are you comfortable? I mean, do you train sometimes when you on the side when you see him do the, the dancing and, and try to find a hole or trying to create that play, or is that part of what makes him where you're not going to take that necessarily away from him and you can just let him kind of be his style as long as it's within you know what you guys are part of the offense? No, I mean I. I, I when he tucks the ball, I, I am not cringing on the sideline, no. Um, you, you know, we want our quarterbacks to make good decisions with the football and not turn it over. And um, I thought there were some times tonight where he started to scramble, and I thought uh, we had receivers come open, and if he chooses not to throw it to him downfield and wants to run and pick up a couple yards, uh, we'll never complain. You know, it's, it's when quarterbacks – uh, start to scramble and, and I think make poor decisions and I think in these first two games uh, that Greg has started for us for the most part he's he's made very good decisions you know he threw the interception in the first drive against Memphis and I think he's settled down extremely well since then and um, you know again that's part of uh, the dynamic he adds to that position in terms of uh, if, if he feels like for whatever reason coverage or protection breaks down he's got the green light to tuck it and run and again I think that's something Opposing defensive coordinators and, and defenses have to um, game plan for. Coach, I know you, you just mentioned that uh, he's, he's playing very smart, but uh, are, you, are you worried at all that Ward's sometimes he gets a little in danger? He's not playing so safe. He took a, he had a pretty scary hit tonight. Um, are you comfortable with him and his, his health? Are you worried that he might get injured running the ball the way he does? Well, I mean, uh, you know, football is a physical sport, and um, you know, worry, uh, uh, you know, the, the health and well-being of our student athletes is first and foremost. You know, but um, he's a competitor, as is Deontay Greenberry, Trayvon Stewart, uh, every, everyone out there wearing a jersey that had Houston uh, across it tonight wants to compete and, and loves to play the game of football, and um, you absolutely hate to see a young man get injured. And uh, we've certainly had our share the last week to 10 days. And, uh, you know, I, I, I used the word slippery this past week describing Greg. You know, he normally doesn't take big hits. Uh, I think one time tonight he got sacked and kind of got twisted underneath the defensive lineman for Temple. I don't know if that's the, the play you're referring to or not. But, uh, um, you know, uh, you, always, you always know going in that uh, Injuries could happen. And you hate the phrase that they're part of the game. Uh, unfortunately, they, they tend to be at times. And and uh, you know, we uh, a couple weeks ago we ordered him uh, some some rib pads, some rib protectors, so he wears those. And uh, you know, he's uh, again he's he's playing the position like he like he's played it in high school and played it since he's been here. And you know, that certainly is a part of uh, of the game. Opportunity uh, for some of these guys to come and you know you lose players and people step up. Marquee, uh, you notice in terms of I me mean, with Daniel being out, and he's one of those guys that has stepped into that role. And it looks like at least the last two games he's come up with some pretty big catches for you. A couple of really nice catches tonight, but he fit that mold as, as far as someone who sees that opportunity. I think he does. I think he does. And I think that's a good way to look at. Uh, that word and how I've used it the last two weeks. You know, Marquise Ambles right now is playing his best football since he's been here in our program. And, um, you know, Wayne Beatles, a young man who's a senior walk-on that, that uh, starts now in place of, of Daniel Spencer and has really given great effort, blocking extremely well, and made some big big catches tonight, big third down catches and conversions tonight. Um, again, I, I don't, uh, 
uh, I guess DeMarcus Ayers might not have had too many catches tonight, but uh, he's another young man that's, I think, stepped his game up. Um, and then I thought this one, one of Deontay uh, Greenberry's better, better performances this year um, in terms of his blocking, his catching the ball, the touchdown catch was outstanding. Even, even the short screens we threw him getting the ability to get upfield. So um, I, I agree with you. Going back to, to your question about Mark Keith, I think he's, he's doing a really, really uh, good job uh, right now. And again, we're going to have to have that moving forward on both sides of the ball. You know, William Jackson was called for a targeting uh, penalty in the second half of this game. So by rule, he'll, he'll uh, have to sit out the first half of our next, uh, our next game against South Florida. So uh, Khalil Williams uh, was wearing jersey number two out there tonight. And uh, we'll look at the film, but he was all over the field and was playing on some special teams. And, uh, and Trayvon Stewart uh, went out with an injury and, and Khalil was out there full time in the second half. So we'll have to continue to have some young men step up. Uh, Landon Roberts is another one. Um, didn't play as much tonight because of uh, what Temple does offensively, but I think in the next couple of weeks uh, you're going to see number 44 out there. Quite a bit at linebacker and, and Stephen Aikens, another young man, has been one of our most consistent, best special teams players and uh, was out there quite a bit at, uh, at safety. Thank you.